Good morning, Year 3, and welcome to our set B set of questions for the Pied Piper of Hamlin. So, uh, once again, I'm going to go through the questions and work out the way to, to get the um, full marks for each question. I'm not going to read the text again. Um, once again, if you need me to read the text, um, just go back to the previous video and you can see me reading that out for you. Um, otherwise, we're going to get straight into it. So, uh, vocabulary, question number one. Into the street, the Piper stepped. Which of the sentences below best describes what this means? Tick one. So, which uh, in the street the piper stepped? Which of the sentences best describes what this means? So, um, does it mean the piper was in a very steep street? Uh, the piper went from a step into the street, or the piper stepped into the street? So, into the street, the piper stepped. I mean, it literally is, if you just reword it, the piper stepped into the street, isn't it? That's the one, so that's the one I'm gonna tick. Um, the other ones don't quite make sense, do they? The piper was in a very steep street, no. The piper went from a step into the street, no. Right, question two. Look at the third verse. Different adjectives are used to describe the rats. Write the words in the correct section of the table below. Two have been done for you. So we've got words to describe size and words to describe color. So we've got brawny as size and tawny as colour. So all the others, we need to write them in the uh, correct place. So, um, yeah, we've got great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, grey rats, tawny rats. So we've already got brawny and tawny done. Um, so I'd actually, just to make things easier for myself, I would cross those two out, okay, because you don't need those anymore. You've done those. So let's just look at the other one. So we've got... Um, Great, uh, that one is going to be um, size. Small, that's going to be size as well. Uh, lean, that's also going to be size. Uh, so the other ones are all about colour from what I can see there. So we've got um, brown, that's a colour. Uh, black is a colour and grey is a colour. So yeah, literally it's um, the top ones in size, the bottom ones in colour. That's, yeah, very straightforward. Uh, question three. Which two words are used to describe the noises the rats make? Which two words are used to describe the noises the rats make? Now I can remember this one from reading it yesterday, but let's just have a look. Um, it was uh, pretty short. Sure yeah, there it is. First uh, verse, there it is, with shrieking and squeaking. Um, then we had the 50 sharps and flats, but the two noises are shrieking and squeaking. Those are the two, aren't they? So uh, shrieking and squeaking. Those are your two words. Question four, retrieval. Which of these statements shows that the rats were dangerous? Add a tick or a cross. So it's asking us to tick or cross. Which of the statements show that the rats were dangerous? So tick if it was dangerous, cross if it was not. So first one, they fought the dogs and killed the cats. Is that dangerous? Yes, definitely. They fought dogs and killed cats. Uh, they licked the soup. Is that dangerous? Um, not technically, I mean they're just licking soup, that's not really dangerous, um, so no. They bit the babies, yes, that one is definitely dangerous. They bit the babies, we know that one. And they ate the cheese, again, they're eating, so, I mean, it's not really hurting anyone, is it? They're just eating cheese, okay. Um, so no, that one is uh, cross. So it should be tick, cross, tick, cross, is how that one should be. Okay, question five. How did the piper get rid of the rats? How did the piper get rid of the rats? So um, there's quite a few lines to this one as well, so we know that our answer needs to be relatively detailed. Um, how did the piper get rid of the rats? So basically, um, we know that he played his flute and the music got them all to go into the river and they all drowned. But here's what I wrote. The piper used a magic flute um, or pipe to make the rats follow him. He led them, um, sorry, he led the rats to a river where they jumped in and drowned. Um, doesn't specifically say they drowned, but again, um, if you know the story, you know that they did drown. Um, but yeah, they all perished, didn't they, in the uh, text? So I suppose if you wrote perished, that would be fine. But yeah, so the Pope used a magic flute or pipe to make the rats follow him. He then led the rats to a river where they jumped in and drowned. Question six, inference. Look at the second verse. Which of these statements describes the piper? Tick one. Which of these statements describes the piper? So we've got, he enjoys his work, he is very old, he is scared of rats, he hasn't played his pipe for a long time. Right, 
Um, let's eliminate what it's not. It doesn't say anything about it being old, so I know it's not that. Is he scared of the rats? I wouldn't have thought so. He's, he's quite confident to get rid of them, so no. He hasn't played his pipe in a long time. Well, he seemed quite confident when he played it. He got rid of them, so the only one it's, it seems to be is he enjoys his work. Um, so yeah, it's that one. He enjoys his work. Question seven. Why did the rats follow the piper? Why did the rats follow the piper? Um, so why did the rats follow the piper? Well, we know it's because obviously he was playing his music and that led them all to follow, didn't it? And listed all the different types and the brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, things like that. They all followed. Um, so yeah, here's what I wrote. I said, uh, because he used a magic flute or pipe that enchanted them. Um, so that's why they followed, because he sort of got in their heads and they all followed and jumped in the river. They didn't mean to do that, obviously. He made them do that with the music. Question eight, look at the third verse. Which of these statements is true? Which of these statements is true? There was only one family of rats. There were many rats. Which of these statements is true? Explain how you know using evidence from the poem. Explain how you know using evidence from the poem. So which of these statements is true? So one of these statements isn't true, okay? So there was one family of rats, or there were many rats. Well, if you read the poem, it lists lots of different types of rats, doesn't it? Okay, lots and lots of different types. So I think it's very unlikely to be only one family of rats. It is that they were there were many rats. That one is the true one. So that's the first bit we need. We need to get that one. So there were many rats. That one is true. Explain how you know using evidence from the poem. How do I know there were many rats? Well, I just said, again, because it talked about lots of different um, families, didn't it? And it even said in there, um, families, I'm pretty sure it listed that in the poem. Where was it? Uh, there you go. Families by tens and dozens. It literally says it right there, doesn't it? Families. So it's not one family, it's families. That's my evidence I'm going to use. And here's how I put it into an answer. I said there were many rats. This statement is true because the poem describes the rats and says families by tens and dozens. I've literally put that in um, quotation points. I'm just going to show you here. There were families by tens and dozens. OK. So I've actually used the evidence, I've written it down to back up what I said. It says using evidence from the poem, and that's exactly what I did. I gave my answer, and then I used my evidence to prove my answer, to say that I was right, and here is why I'm right. Okay. Question number nine. Meaning as a whole. Retell what happened in the poem in your own words. Retell what happened in the poem in your own words. So this is where I'm pretty much just going to have to show you my answer. can't really guide you how to do this because you basically need to just read the poem and you need to put it into your own words, okay? The general idea. Um, but basically, your um, meaning as a whole, if you can see, there is one, two, three, four, five, six lines um, that you need to write on. So it's quite a detailed explanation. Mine's quite a detailed explanation as well. Um, but you basically need, in your answer, to include the beginning, the middle, and the end. You need to sort of cover all three of those points. You can't just sort of skim over it. You need to actually get the main points across. So let me read you what mine is. At the start of the poem, many rats were attacking a village in horrible ways. Then a man called the Piper appeared with a magic pipe that he used to lead all of the rats away. At the end, the rats were all, all followed the Piper to a river where they all jumped in and drowned. So... That has basically explained all the three points, isn't it? So we've got the beginning, the start of the poem, rats were attacking the village in horrible ways. Then we've gone through into detail, just basically told you that's how they attacked. Um, then the piper turned up with his magical pipe in the middle, and at the end he played his pipe and they all followed him off and drowned. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Right, authorial intent, question 10. The rats even spoiled the women's chats by drowning their speaking with shrieking and squeaking. Why has the poet used the words by drowning their speaking? Why has the poet used the words by drowning their speaking? Okay, um, so it is quite clever because again, we know that the rats drown. Okay, so it's sort of a little throwback to that as well. Okay, but mainly it's to sort of show how noisy the rats were, isn't it? It's mainly to show that because um, we know it leads into the shrieking and squeaking bit. Um, so yeah, here's what I've written. I've said to show us how noisy the rats were. The rats were so noisy that the women couldn't hear each other. 
okay? Because the women are obviously talking to each other and they can't quite hear because of all the squeakiness of the rats or the noises they're making. Uh, okay, question 11. Compare. How does life in the village of Hamlin change throughout the poem? How does life in the village of Hamlin change throughout the poem? So again, we've done quite a few of these questions now where we compare one thing, usually a character, saying how the characters change from this point in the per in the story to this point in the story. This question's about the village of Hamlin. How does that change throughout the poem? So um, basically, if we think at the beginning of the poem, it was quite chaotic, okay? There's quite a lot going on, isn't there? So um, if you look at the back of the text, uh, where the, the rats are fighting the dogs, killing the cats, and um, biting the babies, all that sort of stuff, that's all happening at the beginning. And then obviously towards the end, um, all the rats are gone, aren't they? So it's sort of like gone through that change. So I wrote at the beginning of the poem, it was chaotic and scary in the village because of all the rats, okay? And then obviously towards the end, it becomes much more settled. It doesn't specifically say that, though, does it? In the, It just sort of ends where they all plunge and perish. But we can assume that after that, um, the village has sort of gone back to some sort of normality. But yeah, the main thing you need to say is that at the beginning of the poem, it's quite a scary time because there was lots of rats everywhere. You could barely move. There were just rats all over the place. If you imagine being um, sort of walking in the street and there was just rats all over the place, you can't really move for it. It's... Yeah, that's how it was. So that's how it's changed. It's gone from there being lots of rats everywhere to then all the rats leaving because um, they've all drowned. So then obviously the village is now a much more peaceful place um, where you can just be a bit more free with no rats everywhere. OK, so um, that is the end of the comprehension. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, so again, tomorrow is Friday. So you are going to be doing a short comprehension task again with no video. Um, so yeah, good luck with that one. And again, if you do need any support on that one, um, I will actually be home uh, this time, so um, I can specifically help you um, with that one. If you've got any questions, just let me know. Um, but yeah, that should be fine. Um, so yeah, take care everyone, and um, I will see you next week with some more comprehensions. So thank you very much for joining in.